Alrighty gang, we're going to solve a very popular exam problem in thermodynamics using the Van t Hoff equation and thermodynamic data. This is it. Calculate the equilibrium constant for the following reaction at 1000 Kelvin using thermodynamic data, assuming that the change in standard enthalpy is constant. And we have this chemical reaction right here. Now we're going to use the Van t Hoff equation and the integrated form of it, which is right here. And we want to solve for the equilibrium constant, but we don't have too much else. We're going to get that from, from From the data. So we're going to start off by solving for the equilibrium constant K and we're going to do that using this equation. The change in standard Gibbs energy of the reaction equals negative RT ln K. Uh, so we can solve, use this equation to solve for K but we need to know what the change in standard Gibbs energy of the reaction is and we're going to do that from the Gibbs energy of formations. by products minus reactants. So we need to know what the Gibbs energy of formation, the standard Gibbs energy of formation of the products and the reactants are. So we're going to jump to our table to get that. Okay, here we are. So I got this data from chem.wise.edu. It's pretty good. It's easy to scroll and whatnot. So our product is NO2. So this is our change. In, this is our Gibbs energy of formation. D is supposed to be the change here. Uh, it's symbol. So that's 51.31 kilojoules per mole. And the N204, which is our reactant, is 97.89 kilojoules per mole. So if we plug that into our equation right here, we have two times, because there's two of these, times the Gibbs energy of formation, 51.31 kilojoules per mole, minus the reactants, and there's only one here, so this is like one times 97.89 kilojoules per mole, which gives us a Gibbs energy of reaction, standard Gibbs energy of reaction of positive 4.31 kilojoules per mole. Cool beans. So we can plug that into here, into our reaction. Uh, now, rather than using kilojoules, I multiplied it by 1,000 to get it into joules because it needs to cancel out with joules with R. You want to put in the R that has units of joules, not units of pressure, so that joules cancel out. and more Moles cancel out and Kelvin cancel out. You want to be unitless because K is unitless and ln K is unitless. So if we solve for K, we get a value of 0.9981. And I called this K1. So we got one thing for our, our in our Van t Hoff equation, 0.9981. Okay, let's solve for the change in enthalpy of the reaction. The standard enthalpy of reaction will get the same way. It's products minus reactants of the enthalpy of formation, and we'll use thermodynamic data as well. So here we are again, NO2 is our product, and it has an enthalpy of formation of 33.18, and our reactant, N204 has an enthalpy of formation of 9.16 kilojoules per mole. So if we plug that into here, we have two times our 33.18 kilojoules per mole of our product minus reactants, which is 9.16 kilojoules per mole. And if we add that all up or calculate it, our enthalpy of reaction, standard enthalpy of reaction equals negative 1.58 kilojoules per mole. Okay, so we got the K1 and the enthalpy of reaction. All right, so we'll come back to our Van t Hoff equation of what we saw before, and we have our change in enthalpy of the reaction under standard state that we calculated, and we have our K1 as well. Now, our T1 is for 298 Kelvin. How do I know this? Well, if we look at the table, we got to look at to see what temperature it's for, because Even though this is under standard state, that's under a constant pressure of one bar. It could be any temperature. So we want to check to see what it is. And like 99.999% of the time is 298.15 Kelvin, 25 degrees Celsius. But we just want to verify that, which is what we did right here. T2 is what we want. That's 1,000 Kelvin. And K2 is what we're solving for. Now, when we plug this in, you want to make sure that this is in joules per mole. So multiply this by 1,000. And you want to use the R that has joules in it. So joules cancel out. But anyways, if we plug all of that in, we'll get an equilibrium constant of 0.638 it's gone down. So 0.638 compared to 0.9981. Does that make sense? Well, I have a little fire here because the reaction is exothermic. So the, the enthalpy of reaction is negative, which means energy is being released as heat. And if the temperature has gone up, so compared to 298 Kelvin, T2 is at 1,000 Kelvin. At a higher temperature, the equilibrium constant is lower because the reaction shifts to the left. If you add more energy as heat, you like heat it up, it's like we have too much energy. And that's going to shift the reaction to the left due to Le Chatelier's principle. So we'll have less products, more reactants, 
the equilibrium constant is the activities of the products divided by the reactants, so that's why this goes down. Alrighty y'all, I got many, many, many more worked out problems and many derivations, tons of videos on thermodynamics, hang in there. The more problems you do, the better you'll do in your course. I'm with you every step of the way, can survive, and I'll see you in the next video. Cheers.